This video shows how to create single rebars and stirrups using Tecla Structures System Connections. To begin, create a concrete beam on Tecla Structures. The goal is to create longitudinal bars at bottom and top of the beam and stirrups around them. In this example, we use two simple system components. One for the longitudinal bars and the other for stirrups. Unlike basic reinforcement objects, the components add intelligence into the model. For example, you can add or delete notches at beam ends. The components update and the reinforcement adjusts automatically according to the changes. To begin, create a new console application project in Microsoft Visual Studio. Every time you start a new project, Remember to install the Tecla Open API Nudget package. For this example, you will need to add the following directive lines. Here, the try catch method is used to handle exceptions. If you want more information on exception handling, Check the Microsoft documentation for C-sharp reference. First, create a model object to represent the Tecla Structures model that you have opened in Tecla Structures. In many practical applications, the most fundamental user input is the user selection. Use the model object enumerator to iterate through the Tecla Structures model objects. The getSelectedObjects method returns an enumerator of all the selected model objects in the model view. Implement a while loop that moves to the next item in the enumerator. Check if the object is a beam by setting the current object as beam and checking its return value. Next. Set the work plane parallel to the beam's local coordinate system. By default, the work plane is set according to the global coordinate system. First, store the current work plane as a local variable, so you can restore it later on. Next, create a new local plane from the parts coordinate system, and set it as the current work plane. You will need to create a new transformation plane that is defined based on the parts coordinate system. Now set the current transformation plane to the part plane. This way, you can ensure that the behavior and output of the application is not dependent on the beam's location or orientation in the 3D model. To calculate the points for the rebars, you need to query the actual geometry of the part. To do this, create a new instance of the solid class. Here, the getSolid method returns the solid of the beam you have inserted on your Tecla Structures model. Next, initialize the component used to model the longitudinal bars. The number property identifies the component as a longitudinal rebar system component. Initialize the object's properties. For components, you can load standard default values for all properties and only set the necessary values explicitly. For this example, we will define the number of bars and the cover thickness both at the side and the bottom. Next. Prepare the input points for the longitudinal rebars component. Define three points to create the rebars on the bottom of the beam. The point class represents a single position in 3D space, with the coordinates X, Y and Z. Set up the input sequence for the component. The component input class handles the input of component objects and positions. The component input must include all the needed input objects and points in the correct order. In this case the input contains the part as the object 
and the three points just defined. Before inserting the component into the model, you need to add the input to the component. Now, you can insert the component into Tech Law Structures model. If you would run the program at this point, longitudinal rebars should be created on the bottom of the selected beams. To add the longitudinal bars also to the top of the beam, you can reuse the same component object. First, modify the input points, moving them to the top of the beam. Now, you can modify the attributes you want, and insert the component instance into the model. Reduce the number of bars to 2, and insert the updated component into the model. Now, try to run the program, and see if the rebars are created correctly. First, since we changed the current work plane earlier, it is a good practice to restore the previous work plane. Commit changes to tech law structures. After the while loop, call commit changes method. This commits the changes made to the model database so far. Next. Open your tech law structures model and select one or more beams. On Microsoft Visual Studio, select Debug and click Start Debugging. Longitudinal rebars should be created on every selected beam, two on top and four on bottom. Go back to Microsoft Visual Studio to create stirps around the rebars. The stirrups can be created following similar steps as we did with the rebars. Continue after the insertion of the first component. Start by initializing a new component, and set the number property to identify the component as a stirrup reinforcement. Next, prepare input for the component. Instead of using input points, create a polygon for the input. First, create a new object of polygon type. To place the polygon, define its corner points. Components have different input types and orders. To find the correct ones, you can place the component into Tech Law Structures model and follow the user command prompt. Just as in Tecla structures, add the final corner point twice, to finish the polygon. Next, set up input sequence for the component. This time, the input contains the part as the object, and the polygon just define. You also have to add two input positions, to indicate the range to reinforce. Set the component input object for the component. Load standard attributes, and set bar size to 8. Finally, insert the component into the model. Now, when you run the program, the selected beams should look like this. Now, you know how to work with user selected objects, and add different system components into model objects.